Thank you, Kanish, for the introduction. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has advocated that the edible insects are a key to future global food security. They even published a 200-page report that made headlines about this particular thing. Uh, but why was that so important? So um, uh, the problem is that today's world is facing is that the world population is expected to rise to a 10 billion mark by 2050, uh, which would result in a global food crisis and exert more pressure on current resources. Uh, so what we need to do is to expand the glo uh, global food production to, uh, from what we have at the moment. Uh, which would be approximately by 60%. And uh, we need to cater to the burgeoning demands. This would uh, require us to be more sustainable, um, which is an, uh, the sustainability of current resources is under question at the moment. Livestock is also blamed um, many times for a major amount of uh, high emission of uh, greenhouse gases, which, uh, which is actually leading to climate change. And also there's a trend of changing diets that has been seen. So based on all these problems, I came up with my master thesis topic, uh, which was about a comparative study for um, the willingness to consume or the acceptance of foods containing insects in the Western world, for which I uh, took two test countries, that was um, Australia and Germany. Um, so as I've talked about the problem, now I talk about the solution. So. Um, Entomophagy, that might be a newer term for some people here. So it is basically a practice of consuming insects by humans, which, is, which has been derived from the Greek word entomos, meaning insect, and phagein, meaning eating. Um, so uh, why eat insects anyway? Uh, because it has a tremendous amount of benefits uh, for the environment, for the economy, for social, and also for our own health and nutrition. Um, so about 2,000 species have already been known to humans for um, their consumption. Some of the common ones are beetles, grasshoppers, crickets, etc. Um, also entomophagy uh, also is in support um, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, such as zero hunger and climate action. So having given this little introduction about uh, what um, entomophagy is all about, um, I would talk about the research objectives of the study, the methodology that was used, the different research methods that were implied uh, to get to the results that uh, this whole study was about, and uh, moving further, the implications of these results. Um, how can we use them for today's market? How can we use them for it to consume or the environment? And um, like any other study, this study also had its own limitations. So I would be just highlighting a few, uh, followed by a little concluding remark. Um, so coming to the research objectives, it was to investigate whether um, First of all, it was about the acceptance within the um, consumers in these two countries for regarding the edible insects. So how is, the, how is that affected by social demographics such as age or uh, gender? Then exposure, whether they have eaten it before or not, and knowledge about the insects. So um, then also there are certain factors um, that were to be uh, investigated that act as a barrier to the consumption of edible insects. One of them is food neophobia which is a phobia from newer foods that haven't been consumed conventionally so far. Uh, so this was all a comparative study between the uh, mindset of consumers in Australia and Germany regarding the um, insect containing foods. Um, so this was my hypothesis for uh, this whole thesis. Uh, some of you might be wondering why did I take these two countries? A uh, few reasons were that uh, they belong or are a different continent altogether. Um, they both differ in their economic system and the languages spoken and the culture that is vastly different. However, the eating habits are all sometimes or mostly dependent on the culture. Um, so both are high meat consumption countries. However, um, in Aboriginals, it was found that there was a culture of eating insects. 
uh, moving further, um, the regulatory framework. So any rules and regulations that come for these countries, uh, they have to be passed for from the European Commission from Germany and FSANZ is for Australia and New Zealand. So uh, they both have their different guidelines. However, it is um, both these um, associations have allowed production and selling of uh, insects as food for human consumption. Um, since, since this uh, research was carried out during the COVID pandemic time, so there was limitation of time and resources, if only two test countries could be done. Um, let's take a look at the uh, environmental footprints between insects and livestock. So you can clearly see here that um, insects are very low demanding um, organisms as compared to livestock. So they have an extremely low demand for food, land and water. And um, even the greenhouse gas emissions are um, multiple times lesser than for, in, um, for um, cattle or other livestock. Um, so another way of looking at it um, for the climate and the environment, et cetera. Uh, so um, table might look really confusing for you, but I'll just give a overview of the methods used here. So it was a web-based survey where a questionnaire was online for two months and uh, circulated, uh, sorry, and circulated in these two countries. And the selection criteria for the, um, the interviewees was uh, anybody who is above 18 years of age and can take his or her decisions independently. So uh, for the sampling um, for participants, it was done through snowball sampling methods then social media, personal referrals, and also the university database. Um, the sample size was 100 for each country, giving us a total sample size of 200. And the and there were different variables here uh, uh, under social demographic group. There was gender, age, ethnicity, education, occupation, eating habits. So whether you're a vegetarian, vegan, or a meat consumer. Then exposure and knowledge. So whether uh, the people were familiar uh, with uh, this whole practice of eating insects and if they have ever experienced eating it and how is their knowledge about the benefits and risks associated to these kind of foods. Um, then there were also barriers to consumption. So what, what stops them from eating these kind of foods? For instance, whether food neophobia anyway has an effect on the acceptance and then uh, our overall willingness score was uh, calculated for different foods such as chocolates, bread, cookies, protein bars. So how would be the acceptance for these foods if they contain um, insects? And uh, the insect visibility was varied, for example, whether they, were, they have whole insects or gram insects. Uh, so the analysis was done through the tool IBM SPSS Statistics version 27. So different tests were run, um, univariate tests such as mean and standard deviation, bivariate analysis were done for checking the effect of the um, variables on the acceptance. And there were some open-ended responses for which content analysis was done. So I'll just give an overview of the research findings that I had. So this is the overall willingness score of consuming these kind of foods. So this was 2.15 on a five point scale, which is um, considerably low, um, if you would see. So not many people are willing to consume them. Um, so there were a higher number of females in the sample. Uh, the most common age groups were 26 to 34 years and 35 above um, in each country. Uh, our sample had a higher number of meat consumers and vegetarians and vegans. And uh, the, uh, most of the uh, ethnic groups or people belong to Asian or Pacific Islander or white or Caucasian um, ethnic groups. So which also corresponds to the statistical data for these two countries. Um, so it was um, also found out that mm, most of the people have heard about it, uh, about this whole practice, though not so many people had an experience of 
consuming these foods. And uh, our, uh, so the sample wasn't as knowledgeable about the risks and benefits with most people having a knowledge of just one risk um, that is associated to these sort of foods. Um, so um, the uh, research question was answered uh, through this test and it was found that uh, at 95% confidence level, uh, so that's all with the statistics and everything. So it was found that gender, ethnicity, eating habits, uh, experience of uh, insect containing foods and the knowledge of risks and benefits does have a significant effect on the willingness to consume insect containing foods. However, it was found out that age, education, and occupation did not have any significant effect on the acceptance or willingness to consume. So um, it was expected that the younger population would have a higher willingness uh, score. However, this wasn't the case, so it had no significant effect. Uh, so um, it was an interesting question to find out what are the barriers to consumption? So what is stopping people from consuming uh, insect containing foods? Um, irrespective of the fact if they had eaten it before or not, it was found that the three um, majorly affecting barriers were social cultural norms, lack of familiarity with the uh, whole topic and discussed. So it discussed most of the people to um, consume it and I'm sure most of you must be thinking at this time, oh, okay, I'm never gonna try it. Um, so yeah, moving further. So like I said, different, it was um, asked uh, whether they would consume meatballs with brown insects or whole insects and how much, how willing would they be to consume these foods. Uh, so this was done for each country. Uh, interestingly, it was found out that for uh, meatballs and protein bars that would contain crowned insects in both the countries, the willingness score was the highest. So when the, there's no visibility and they know that they're eating for, um, let's say, nutrition or it's good for the environment, and it doesn't affect their palate, uh, the taste, the um, flavor, they would be highly willing to consume it. Um, like I've mentioned before, like any other um, research, we need to have some implication of this one as well. So it is expected that the success of insect containing foods uh, would be niche markets. So uh, the market needs to grow uh, still. Um, also the processed food products um, with insect flour, that would be a higher, there would uh, be more accepted by, well by the people. So the food companies that are targeting for such products should keep this in mind. And also they should um, uh, create efficient marketing strategies where they could organize tasting sessions, seminars or workshops, which would increase consumer awareness because as we've seen, the consumers aren't aware as much about the benefits and risks associated to their food. Uh, also, the result of this consumer study was projected to a foundation of uh, to the foundation of a startup called Cocoon, uh, which was based upon um, manufacturing insect containing pasta. And I was also one of the founder members of this um, particular pr um, project that was started by uh, six different uh, students from Italy and Germany. Though it's also still at a initial stage. Um, yeah, so this research also had certain limitations and there would be some uh, suggestions for the future research. Uh, so like I've mentioned, it was done during the pandemic. So there, was, there were restrained, um, resources and time res uh, restraining. Uh, so it wasn't done in a real life bank situation. So it was all um, with the participants imagination, whether they wanna do it or how would the product be like. So maybe this would be the next step. and. Uh, the sample cannot be like representative for the whole West because the sample size was quite small and the uh, test countries were just limited to two. Uh, and also it is suggested for future uh, research that sensitive trials should be conducted for, excuse me, for different products. So I'd like to conclude by saying that we need to um, improve upon the exposure uh, because it had a highly significant effect on the consumer acceptance. So uh, researchers and food manufacturers and um, uh, different organizations, maybe they can uh, 
aid in making people more aware of the benefits. Um, the two main benefits are for health, that it's high in protein content, and also for the environment. And though most of the consumers aren't uh, so happy to con it, involve that uh, product into their own daily diet, uh, however, there was a higher acceptance in Germany seen than in Australia. So maybe a market would be coming up in Europe more like, at a higher speed than here. It, um, and uh, for um, in-depth understanding, we do need to uh, do it on a real market data. Yep, so these are my references and thank you.